Welcome everybody to Spacember! A wonderful cavalcade of game discussions about space. And it's in December. And that's why I called it Spacember. It's going to trend. I'm I'm sure of it. Anyway, why not kick off Spacember with the biggest space game of 2023? Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty. I'm being told that Cyberpunk is not actually in space. Uh oh. Alright, let's just talk about Starfield. But before we get into talking about the game itself, we of course have to go over our space checklist. So, for Starfield, do we have microgravity? Yes, we indeed do have some sections of the game that feature microgravity. It is not very prominently featured, but there are some ships and some facility places where it is used, so technically it does have it. It's, it's just not a lot. Oxygen meter. Yes. Unfortunately, yes, very much so. Uh, it is basically your stamina meter if you run or do too much physical extraneous stuff in Starfield. Uh, your, uh, your oxygen meter essentially goes down. It's not so much that you lose it in space, but you exert yourself and so the, the oxygen depletes. So, yes. Aliens! Um... Yes, kind of. It's complicated. There are uh, alien monsters, like uh, like animals, on other planets. So, so yes, and uh, also to like the humanoid aliens. Also, kind of yes. Not gonna get too much into it, but uh, kind of lasers. Yes, actually, there are a whole host of energy weapons in the game. But you do actually get, like, a, a laser cutter that's used for carving rocks, so... Yeah, I guess I guess there is, like, a... Not, like, a little pew-pew laser pistol, but you get a yeah, laser cutter. So, yes. Robots! Oh, yeah. Lots of robots. Spaceships. Yes, actually, uh, not only are there spaceships, but you get to build and pilot your own spaceships. Weird food! Yeah, not only is there weird food in the game, like all of these branded pieces of, of food and cartridges around, but you can also learn to craft them yourself. So, hey, I guess on, on our space checklist, uh, Starfield does pretty well, uh... And the reason I think it does so well is because Starfield pretty much just throws everything and the kitchen sink at you. So let's just talk about the game. Starfield is a game that Bethesda has been developing for, it seems like, decades now. Uh, they have been talking about making this game for a while. Uh, it has been several years since we got like the initial opening screenshots, essentially, like the nice little screensavers that they did for it. And it is finally here in 2023. And obviously there were a lot of people that were going to be very excited about that. Bethesda has made, you know, the modern Fallout games and the Elder Scrolls games, and those are like these big epic RPGs, and thought about taking it to space is really exciting. Um, and how it fares in that is up to interpretation. Uh, some people might find it to be more of the same. Uh, some people may find that it is a little outdated. And uh, some people might get exactly what they were looking out of it. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about that now. Starfield starts off with you as a miner on a mining colony. Because that's usually where miners are. And uh, you're learning the ropes, uh, figuring out how your cool little laser cutter will cut open rocks and get you minerals. And, oh no, on like your rookie day, your, your first day on the job, 
uh, you come in contact with an alien artifact, and it turns out that you are one of only, like, two people who have ever had direct contact and survived this alien artifact. It has given you visions of things that you don't really comprehend, and this means that you have to investigate further. I mean, I guess you don't technically have to. You could also just tool around the galaxy and do very little of anything. But uh, if you want to do the story, you might want to investigate it. You are directed by several people that you meet to go and see Constellation, a group of explorers that are really at explorers and scientists in a time where exploration is discouraged or has fallen out of favor amongst the general population. Because in Starfield, you have a bunch of these settled systems and different factions that are around. But whatever lies beyond that, uh, yeah, whatever. Just kind of, they, they don't care so much anymore. And that might actually be the least believable part of this entire game is that people just decided not to explore anymore they they have the technology they have warp drives you can you can hyper jump like from one system to another no problem uh it, it doesn't seem to be a limitation at all and there's lots of systems that apparently are out there that you can navigate to but uh people were just like nah not interested. That undermines the whole history of of humanity. But okay, man, why not? Let's go with it. From here, Starfield takes you on a journey across the galaxy to secure all of the other alien artifacts. Because when you put them all together, um, it creates a device. And we don't really know what that device does, but we'd like to collect it before this other group called the Starborn, which we know very little about, but seems to have very advanced technology at their disposal, gets it. And we don't know what they're going to use it for. And the story sort of unravels from there. I won't get much into story beats themselves. Just be aware that there are a lot of factions that you can work for. Uh, they all have storylines of their own. Some of them are going to be more engaging than others. Some of them I wanted to finish. Others I really didn't care anything about. Uh, and then the main storyline also happens, which uh, I, I eventually wanted to just finish up because I'd mostly been tooling around doing very little, except, you know, just exploring the galaxy a bit. Again, the idea that people lost interest in space exploration is like the most unrealistic thing in Starfield because you know that most players that actually got drawn in for a hundred plus hours like me were mostly just seeing what's out there because that's kind of what we do. We're, we're people. We like to see what's out there. As with a lot of other Bethesda games, Starfield really does its best work in the stuff that's kind of off the beaten path. The main storyline of Starfield is fine, but it's not great. You know, I, I pretty much summarized it at the beginning there. It's literally, you know, you're, you're working for Constellation, and they send you to all of these temples that they found coordinates to, and I recover the artifacts. And then you put the artifacts together, and then the end of the game happens, essentially. Uh, and in the meantime, you learn more about this Starborn, and, and what their deal is, and how it connects to, you know, you or your friends, and everything like that. And then, without giving too much away about the main storyline, I, I, I won't put spoilers here, because I'm not going to tell you what happens. But what I will at least give you is that uh, when the game does essentially conclude... It allows you to do like a, a new game plus of sorts, which will reset you to the beginning of the game, but with knowledge of what has taken place, of the stuff that you now know, and from a completely different perspective as things have changed for you and your character. And I will say that when that happened, and I, I kind of reset 
even though I knew that there was like a whole other way that you could view the storyline, I actually kind of decided that that was the point I was going to stop playing because I really didn't want to keep playing <laughs> the whole thing over again. But as I said, the best stuff is really in the little corners of the world, the stuff that you uncover. Uh, for instance, there's the Mantis storyline, which you might uncover through a, a mysterious note, top secret note that you get uh, early on in the game, which directs you to this underground layer of essentially Starfield's version of the Batman. You can take on the mantle of the Mantis and get the ship and the suit, and and people might recognize you as as that character. It's a little like Silver Shroudy, very interesting one about like historical figures that have been cloned and trying to figure out what you're going to do with them. Uh, there is this one really wacky mission where. Uh, someone wants you to scare away the tourists because they're so annoying uh, on Mars, and so they have you dress up as a, a tardigrade, and you uh, you go and just scare off groups of tourists as like a little side mission. It's something really wacky. You put on a tardigrade suit, good times. The Crimson Fleet storyline is also really interesting because they're like the pirates but they're looking for this treasure from a, a long dead pirate and you're playing as like a double agent between like a task force that has been sent out to find them and then uh working for the the pirates themselves and you're trying to figure out where your dual loyalties are it's a little bit like um like like splinter cell double agent where you're trying to divide your loyalties between these two factions trying to figure out if you can balance this out until the end where you have to make a decision um there's some really interesting things like that but i'm not going to lie a lot of it is just filler uh, most of the planets that you go to are not crafted worlds. In fact, I would say that only maybe 5 or 10% of the entirety of the game is crafted content. The rest of it is procedurally generated. Uh, you also don't have actual planetary travel. You will go to a planet and you can make landfall anywhere, but it will create essentially like a procedurally generated seed of the area that you pinpoint on the map, and then it will generate a specific area of that map that does have borders to it. And so it's kind of endless, but it doesn't feel seamless as a planet-to-planet -planet travel. And that's, that's unfortunate, because when we were originally hearing about Starfield, we were given the impression that there were, like, a thousand planets to actually explore, and they're kind of right, but not in the way that you would think of from, like, a No Man's Sky, or maybe an Elite Dangerous, even. In our, the year of our Tim Curry, 2023, uh, that just feels a little bit outdated. I would say that this is Bethesda's most ambitious RPG. Uh, they, they definitely were trying to shoot for the how big can we make this thing, uh, how much stuff can we put into it. There is literally everything in this game. It's, uh, it's space travel, it's planetary travel, there are crafting mechanics, I can make guns, I can build my spaceships, I can build space ports, like I can do base building in this game. I can uh, hire uh, different people that aren't even, like, the main characters in the game to be on my ships. Uh, I, I have, like, whole upgrade systems and everything. I, there's just, there's, there's so much stuff. There's just tons of stuff. And that is sort of cool, and it's also kind of bad. It's cool in that if you're familiar with other Bethesda RPGs, the amount of stuff is sort of a uh, hallmark, something that you might actually enjoy. The problem, of course, is that Starfield is so big, and there's just so much stuff 
you're probably just going to see it as clutter. And it's a lot of clutter that is placed on a vast nothingness. You'll go to planets, there will be what seems like a lot of landmarks to go to, and yet it also takes you traipsing across great voids to get to any of it. Imagine Assassin's Creed 2, where you had all those feathers to collect. Well, imagine if all those feathers were across a galaxy. Okay, that's kind of what Starfield ended up doing. No one liked the feather collecting you had to do as Ezio. And no one's really going to enjoy it when you just try to expand it out into the infinite void. I still contest Starfield would be a much better game if they actually had fewer planets and made those planets have real personality and just laid them down with good, interesting content. Like, don't give me a thousand planets that I have to just traipse across wide voids to get to some landmark so that I can, I can get one rock or I can find one chest from a spaceship that died here. Uh, don't give me that. Give me ten planets. Okay, just like, like, like ten planets over four systems. Four or five systems. Okay? You can still make this whole thing work. You know, we have the settled systems. There are three settled systems. Okay, you have, like, have ours... And you have, like, maybe, I don't know, Alpha Centauri and Horsehead Nephew, something like that. You have, like, a few settled systems. And then there's a couple that are unexplored. Oh, we don't go there. Right? And, and then you get a signal, and it's from one of those. And so you go and you explore that other one. And you find stuff there. And it's like, oh, this is new stuff. And then that leads you to later section where there's something even more dangerous out in this other one we don't we 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 like never go there and then you have to go there and that's how the game wraps up it, it still works but then there's only like 10 10 planets and maybe they could actually feel organic in how you interact with them where you know maybe i can i can pilot my ships and i i can go down towards the planet's surface with my ship and, and land at certain points with my ship instead of having like a, a seed created for an artificial place on that world. Um, you know, there's that. Maybe that. Bigger games are not always better. The size doesn't always matter. It's not just something that they say to make you feel better about yourself. Don't, don't worry, guys. It happens to a lot of us. But the, the point is, it's not just the size that matters. It's really what you do with it. And what Bethesda has started to do, it, it, it seems like with every release, is decide that the actual scope of the game, like the actual physical size of the game, is the biggest component to their success. If we could make a game the size of a universe, that would be awesome. Even if there's nothing in there. Even if the amount of content equates to what you had in Fallout 3. Ultimately, because there isn't a lot more content than any of those other games, but it is spread so far out, what you're just doing is putting a lot of room for downtime between my objectives and the interesting, cool stuff. There's been some other people that have talked about this. I think Josh Strife Hayes mentioned it at one point, is that Starfield suffers from a case of having too much space between events. And it's mostly because of traversal. You know, the amount of time that you imagine walking somewhere in an epic RPG between one thing that happened to another thing you stumble across is usually like, what, a minute, a minute and a half, it gives you enough time so that you're looking around, you're exploring the space a little bit, and oh, I've run across something interesting. And with Starfield, 
I know my objective is over there, but it might take me like five minutes to get there, and then nothing interesting happens in that entire time. So, yeah, you can play this game for a hundred and something hours. I know I did, but I am also of the opinion that a lot of that was unfortunately downtime that I won't remember and was really just filler. Which does bring me to the point, why did I bother playing it for that long? Well, because for a Bethesda RPG, I do kind of like the whiling away of just ambling through the world. There is a certain zen-like quality to it, and if you get into that trance-like state, you can, you know, find it a little chill in those moments of just doing some mindless activities. But it is junk food as far as games go. There's not a lot of nutritional value. You have to wait so long to get to the nutritional value of Starfield. And that's unfortunate. And one of the ways that I can quantify that is by how memorable the experience was. When I talked to you about those missions that I went on that I thought were really cool, those are like the only memories I have of the game. Like, I remember a couple of the cities and the general vibe that they went with and some of the main characters' names and some of the organizations, but I don't really have a lot of big, memorable things stuck in my head that happened in Starfield. And I'm like a month and something out since I've played the game at all to give myself some space. And I'm just realizing that I don't really remember a ton of what happened. And that's annoying. You know, Skyrim, I don't remember everything about, but I remember the experience of getting to explore the landscape. However, if uh, Skyrim were Starfield, the world would have been 17 times as big, but you would have just spread out all of the nodes further apart. That doesn't make the game more interesting, and it doesn't actually give you more content. It just makes it more of a time sink. So Starfield checks off, like, all of the boxes when it comes to things you might see in a space game. It throws everything at the wall. It's the kind of thing that Bethesda was bound to make, because it is very much a Bethesda RPG. And while I like Bethesda RPGs, and am predisposed to like Starfield, I do have to say that it did not stick with me in the way that some other epic RPGs have, and I don't have as much interest in going back and playing it or trying it with a different character as I did with other games. I've gone back and played, like, Fallout 3 a few times. I've played New Vegas I don't even remember how many times. I have tried different characters in Skyrim. I used to while away so many hours in Morrowind. Um, that's just what I, I think of when I think of Bethesda RPGs, is that it felt like an exploration of all of this new, interesting stuff, and I never knew what I was going to run across. Starfield, unfortunately, is one of those games where I very much know what I'm going to run across. I've seen it from, like, a thousand meters away. I just know that the next five minutes of my life are trying to traverse that space. And then I'll meet a character whose name I will never remember, who will send me on a radiant quest so that I can do a menial task because another settlement needs my help, essentially. And then I will go there and I will get a reward and rinse and repeat ad nauseum. And it's just going to start to feel boring. You know, one of the most interesting things about games like Skyrim or Fallout 3, was not getting to your destination. It was all of the stuff that happened to you on the way to your destination. You get out of Vault 101 in Fallout 3, and you're on a quest to find your dad. And you're supposed to go to Megaton, 
And then you're supposed to go to this radio station. You're, you're supposed to go, go to Galaxy News Radio. And then you're supposed to go to Rivet City. But it's not just going there that was the big deal. It's that you're going to run across giant ants. Super mutants attack you. You you come across this, you know, supermarket that's overrun by bandits. There's these moles, these giant mole rats that come out of the woodwork. Megaton's got this big bomb in the center of town, and it could activate if you're not careful. What's that thing over on the horizon? Well, that looks like a giant tower. What are those city ruins? Can I even get there? All of this stuff that comes across, all of the things that you find out in the periphery of those worlds. Skyrim's the same thing. It's the stuff you run across. Morrowind, yeah, I need to get to the main city, but then a wizard drops out of a tree in front of you. Oh, what, what was that about? It's all those things. Starfield, I get out of my ship, that's my destination, and I would just walk there, and I get there, and then I leave. Technically, there's a lot of content. Technically, there's a lot of things you can do in Starfield, and it will be a great time waster. But it doesn't function as well as other Bethesda RPGs, and frankly, isn't as engaging as other epic RPGs from other companies. And so, I don't necessarily recommend it, but at the same time, I do have to admit that I freely and happily put over 100 hours into it. And no one told me to do that. No one forced me to do that at gunpoint, or laser point in this case. Games I would recommend instead of Starfield... Probably, frankly, No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is also a big open universe game, but at least in that one, it does feel like the planets are fully explorable, which they essentially are, and the sense of exploration is everywhere. You know, you land on a planet, and there's all this flora and all this fauna, and it, it, it could be completely unique. You could be the first person to ever be on this planet in the entire world that has ever been in No Man's Sky. And there's going to be unique environmental stuff that's going on, and some procedurally generated monsters, uh, and, and creatures, and, and flora, and fauna that you get to explore, and get to catalog, and name, and uh, and then... On top of that is the fact that Hello Games has just done such a great job of updating content continuously with these really big patches, these big DLCs that were free, that really improve upon what the game didn't do well at the beginning, which is essentially where Starfield is now, uh, where it felt like a lot of nothing in between so that there was actually a, a narrative and a storyline, and the idea of learning the languages of all these alien species that you mean. Um, it does a good job at that, and it's from a, you know, an indie studio that had high ambitions and did everything in their power to, to try and live up to and exceed what they promised uh, after they kind of got knocked down a peg by delivering... A, a half-baked product. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, if you like the idea of an explorable galaxy or something like that, eh, go play No Man's Sky. Do that instead. Yeah, I think you're going to have a better time. So this has been the first episode of Space Ember. There's going to be more space. Don't worry. Not down here. This is the mine. It's very claustrophobic. Actually, it's very claustrophobic since you're here. Can you, can you go? Because I actually need my own personal space. Yep. That's right, this time I'm actually actively kicking you out. It's a new thing I'm trying. Because it's Space Ember! <laughs> <laughs>